Okay, so I'm going to explain 14 until I stop and run out of time. All right, so identify the following as a chemical or physical change. If you're breaking glass, guys, you're not changing the identity of the compound, so therefore it's physical. Rusting, again, is definitely chemical. You're changing the identity. Melting butter, it's still butter. It's just in the liquid form, so it's physical. Frying an egg, you're actually changing the identity because you can't get the original raw egg back, so it's chemical. Boiling water, it's physical. You're taking it from a liquid to a gas. If you crush a can, you change the shape. You don't change the identity of the can, so it's physical. Cutting grass, you're making it shorter, but you're not changing the identity of the grass, so it's physical. And anything with explosions, chemical. So fireworks exploding, definitely chemical. All right, for 15, if 50 grams of sodium reacts with chlorine to form 126 grams of salt, how many grams of chlorine reacts? So what I would recommend that you do for this, write out a reaction. So I took Na plus Cl gives you NaCl. Now, this is not the correct reaction. You'll learn how to write reactions in two chapters, okay? But this is the basics, and that's all we need. So we know we have 50 grams of sodium. We don't know how much chlorine we have, and we know it makes 126 grams of NaCl. Based on the law of conservation of mass, it tells us that you have to have an equal amount on this side, on your product side, and your reactant side. So this 50 plus whatever this is has to equal 126. So that's 76. 16 is the exact same thing. You take H2O though and make hydrogen and oxygen. And I wrote H2 and O2 and could have written Cl2 because those are all diatomic elements, by the way. Okay, so you have 178.8 grams of water and that makes 20 grams of hydrogen and however much of O2 we don't know. And so all you need to do, guys, is just subtract, right, 178.8 minus 7, sorry, minus 20, and you get 158.8. All right, conversions. These should not be too hard at this point. We've got two formulas. Kelvin equals 273 plus degrees Celsius helps us with this one. You just plug and chug. So 10 degrees goes in here. So your total temperature now is 283 Kelvin because you did 273 plus 10. For this one, it's a little bit more complicated because I have to go from Kelvin to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit, because I don't have a Kelvin-Fahrenheit um, converging factor. So for Kelvin, 220 here equals 273 plus degrees Celsius. What you should get for degrees Celsius is negative 53 degrees Celsius. Then what you're going to do is take negative 53 degrees Celsius, multiply it by 1.8, and you get negative 95.4 equals degrees Fahrenheit minus 32. And then you add 32 to both sides, and you should get negative 63.4. Here's the important thing. In your final step, check to be careful with sig figs or decimal places or whatever. Since I'm adding in my final step, this is one decimal place, and this has zero. Okay. And I wasn't careful with this one. I know that, guys, but I know this one has zero decimal places, and that's the most extreme. So you don't even need to worry about it, really. This has zero, so this has to have zero decimal places, so this is just negative 63 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. The energy of motion is known as kinetic energy. Energy, uh, The energy of an object's position is potential energy. All right, for this conversion, guys, 9.5 joules, I need your four steps. I know I didn't do it. I'm sorry, but I just needed to get this out as quick as possible. Um, 9.5 joules, crisscross swoosh. You put joules on bottom and calories up top. Okay, there's one calorie in every 4.184 joules, and that's given to you. So you take 9.5 and divide by 4.184. Here's the issue. And I actually did this wrong. I just caught myself. This has two significant figures. Therefore, this should be 2.3 joules. Two sig figs, two sig figs. This is exact. You can't use this for determining sig figs. All right, 7.8 cals. That's big cals to joules. So 7.8 big cals. Crisscross swoosh, I need to go to little cows first and then to joules. So I'm going to put big cows on bottom, little cows up top. Crisscross swoosh again, I'm going to put joules and then little cows on bottom. So I put 1,000 calories, there are 1,000 little calories in one, ca in one big calorie. And then there's 4.184 joules in one cow. So then you take 7.8 times 1,000 times 4.184. This has two sig figs, so my final answer has two as well. So it's 33,000 joules. Number 20, make sure to be identifying each piece of information. So here, this is my mass, okay, grams are mass. This is my Q, this is my heat, okay, this is my change in temperature, TF minus TI. So that's going to be 150, okay, so Q equals MC delta T. Make sure you're doing all four steps. I didn't, I'm sorry. Okay, so this is my Q, that's my 
mass, which I, sh I think I, I hopefully changed in the problem, just to 15, not 15.75, so 15 grams times C times 150. Now, I need to divide to get rid of the 15 and the 150. So if I take 15 and 150 and multiply them together, I get 2,250. So I divide both sides by that to get rid of those, so C is all by itself. And what I get is 0.483. Now, this has six sig figs, this has two, and this has two. Okay. And so therefore, this needs to be 0.48, to have two sig figs. This is joules over, I divide it by grams and degrees Celsius. So it's joules over gram degrees Celsius, and you're done. 21. Q, it's asking how much heat, so I don't know. Q equals 10, 10 grams, okay, that's my mass, times my specific heat, which is 0.9, times 33, because TF, final, is 55, minus 22 is 33. So you just do a simple multiplication. Notice this is one sig fig, this is three sig figs, and this is two sig figs. So my final answer needs to be 300 joules. Guys, this is just a list of my metalloids. Be able to identify metals versus metalloids versus non-metals because I'll ask some questions about that. All right, here, I'm going to do a quick explanation. Those are the answers, so I would pause me once I'm done um, and check your answers and come to me if you have any questions. Atomic number is the same thing as your number of protons. Protons minus electrons is your charge. So, for example, 35 minus 36 gives me negative 1. Okay? My protons plus my neutrons gives me my mass number. So, for example, here, 35 plus 45 gives me 80. So the way that I write this in the symbol, 80 is the mass number, 35 is the protons or the atomic number, Br is my element, and then the charge is negative 1. So for here, for example, I have no charge because protons minus electrons, 54 minus 54, is 0. So this should be very helpful. Um, pause me right now, check your answers, come in to me if you have questions. Okay, 24A, um, we went through this in class, but let's go through it again. Boron has a mass of 10. This is its percent because I moved it two places over, 1, 2. Same thing here, 1, 2. This is a weighted average. Now, I find my answer first, and then I have to deal with rounding. When I multiply 10 times 0.1978, I get 1.978. However, here's the issue. This has one sig fig. Since I'm multiplying, this also needs to be, this answer to this needs one sig fig. So this is going to round to two. Here, this is two sig figs. So this is going to round to 8.8. .8. The reason why I do this, guys, not for this part, just for up here, is to find out. Now I'm going to add. So I use fewest number of decimal places. So this is zero decimal places. This is one. So my final answer needs zero decimal places. Okay, explain my boron 11 and boron 10 are isotopes of each other. So they have the same number of protons, same number of electrons. Okay, the difference is that they have a different number of neutrons. Okay, while ions have the same number of protons and neutrons, but a different number of electrons. So that's just to help clarify things for you. All right, identify things as an element or a compound. If it's an element, it's either going to be atomic or molecular. If it's a compound, it's molecular or ionic. Okay, this is an element. You can find it on the periodic table. It exists by itself, therefore it's atomic. This is a compound. There are two elements there, okay, more than one. And it is ionic because it's a metal and a nonmetal. This is an element, okay, it can be found on the periodic table, and it's atomic because it exists by itself. This is a compound because you've got two or more different elements, and it's ionic because it's a metal and a nonmetal. This is an element because you have only one type of element, right, at it. Okay. However, it is molecular because there are two that exist together. Remember, your diatomic elements include nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and hydrogen. Those make the seven on the periodic table. Okay. Here, this is a compound, okay, two or more different elements, but because this is a nonmetal and that's a nonmetal, it's molecular. Here again, it's a compound and it's molecular again because it's a nonmetal and a nonmetal. Okay. Here are my answers for naming. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through them pretty quickly and just explain super quickly. This is molecular compound, so I just go by the name. So it's BRF8. Okay. I don't cross charges or anything. I literally go by what it's saying. So BR, there's one of them. There are eight fluorines. There you go. Calcium chloride, I've got across my charges. So CaCl2. Because CA has a plus two charge, CL has a minus one charge, I cross my charges. This is molecular, so I just go by how many the prefixes are telling me. So there are two nitrogens, di, five oxygens, pence. 
manganese bromide, this has a plus three charge, this is a minus one charge. So when I cross my charges, the three goes here and the one goes there. We don't actually write a one though. Lithium sulfide, this is ionic again, so I'm crossing charges. Lithium has a plus one, sulfur has a two minus, so I cross charges, this becomes Li2S. Copper has a two plus charge, bicarbonate has a minus one charge. This is ionic, because copper is a metal, so therefore I cross my charges, the two goes there, the one goes there, and it becomes what you see in front of you. Aluminum hydroxide, ionic again, because this is a metal, metal and a non-metal. The aluminum has a plus three charge, so the three goes down there. Hydroxide has a negative one charge, so that goes right there. Okay. Sodium phosphide, again, ionic because it's a metal and a non-metal. So the plus one for sodium is there, the three minus for phosphite is there, so I cross my charges, the three goes there, and there's an un invisible one there. Okay, phosphorus tetraoxide, this is molecular, therefore I just go by the name, so PO tetra four. Calcium acetate, two plus charge for calcium, one minus for acetate, so the one goes there, and the two goes there. Copper nitride, copper has a two plus charge and it's ionic, right? So two plus there, nitride has a three minus, so three goes there, two goes there. Bromine heptachloride, bromine there's one, hepta means seven, okay? As soon as you see a prefix, guys, it's gonna be molecular, okay? So no crossing charges. Alrighty, 27A, iron, you look at your periodic table, you say, oh my gosh, that's an ionic compound. I don't know its charge because it is a transition metal, therefore it needs to be iron. I need to write the charge three bromide. P is a non-metal, therefore this is going to be molecular, so it's phosphorus. There are three of them, so trichloride. Calcium is a metal, so it's going to be ionic. I know the charge of calcium always, it's plus two, so it's just going to be calcium sulfide. Nickel, I don't know the charge of always because it's a transition metal, so I uncross my charges. The three goes there, that tells me the charge of nickel is three, so nickel three carbonate. Again, this is a metal, so it's ionic. Sodium, I know the charge of always, so it's sodium chloride. This is a non-metal, so it's molecular, so I just use the subscripts. Di-nitrogen, there are two of them. Tetrahydride, not hydroxide, hydride. This is ionic, okay? Therefore, I need to look to see if I know the charge of aluminum. I do, it's always plus three. Therefore, it's just aluminum oxide. Lead, I need to look to see if I know the charge. I don't always know the charge. Therefore, I look at carbonate. It has a negative two charge, and there are two of them. So that contributes a total of negative four which means lead contributes plus four, so it's lead four carbonate. Okay. Magnesium, it's ionic, it's a metal, so I need to see if I know the charge. I do, it's plus two always, so it's just magnesium phosphide. Manganese, I need to see if I know the charge always. I don't, because it, it's ionic, I don't know the charge because this metal is a transition metal, so I uncross the charges, the two goes there, so it's manganese two phosphide. Silver, I need to see if I know the charge because this is an ionic compound and this is a metal. I do know the charge, it's one of my exceptions. Ag has a plus one charge always, zinc always has a plus two charge. Therefore, I don't need to write the charge because I always know it, so it's just silver sulfide. This is molecular because I is a non-metal, therefore it's just iodine pentafluoride. And I am done.